Well, I thought I'd do an update video of this uh, email air Weatherwall FM61H made in 1987. Check the other videos. Um, yeah, it's a bit sad. Let's just zoom in. You don't have a tripod, so. Well, normally I just hold the camera in my hand and whatever. But anyway, let's uh, let's get this cover off. Screws are out of it. Uh, hmm. I'm supposed to use a screwdriver to get these things off, but uh, it's been off so many times you sort of don't need one anymore. Yeah, I don't know what this camera's shooting. Yeah, it's not bad, I suppose. Maybe I can sort of. Yeah, tilt the whole thing up a bit more. You just have to bear with it. Now, I, I suppose what it comes down to is the fact that the compressor's probably buggered. I mean, I do have a professional coming out to look at it because I'm not a refrigeration mechanic. I'm really just a very clever backyarder. Um, okay, I know what electricity is. You know, I know how it propagates through cable and stuff like that. And all that sort of good stuff, which everyone should know if they're actually playing with electricity. But, um, I've rewired it. The spade terminals were shitty. Um, and it's a bit chicken and egg. I mean, I, it's sort of impossible to work out whether the spade terminals are cooked because the compressor's got something wrong with it, or I think that's actually the case. They were kind of corroded underneath these, uh, you know, Oh, I thought the tape could have had something to do with that too, but I think it's just been, they're just being hot, and yeah, look, crimp connectors, or oh, crimp lugs are fine, but really in a thing like this they're not, because, you know, they're subject to vibration, to moisture, blah, blah, blah. Also, the lugs I used, uh, uh, they're actually um, just generic crimp lugs, they're nothing special, they're really not good enough for this unit. Um, that being said, um, I think the biggest problem with this compressor is it's just old. I mean, this thing is, like it's 1987, it's 30 years old. Like it's 2017 now, so, um, there are some good points about this air conditioner. It's made very well. The, uh, just carefully pointing the camera up. The fan motor there is actually new. It's only, it's only a few years old, so that's actually a brand new motor, basically. Um, the only other thing that could ever possibly go wrong is the um, condenser fan motor, which is down there. That's original, but um, on saying that, I can get this camera to sit there the way I want it to. Sorry, bear with me. Um, that that outdoor fan motor is actually, you know, the, the the indoor one was 300 bucks. I'm assuming the outdoor one's probably roughly the same. It's a smaller motor, actually. It's not. This is less powerful um, than, than the. Um, indoor fan motor and I don't remember what the rating is but I know the cap for it's only two microfarads the one for the indoor fan motor is four so anyway um, the only things I haven't replaced are the contactor um, but I really don't think the contactor's got anything wrong with it I mean it's a big massive contactor uh, if I look at the ratings on the side uh, here we are, we are. Sorry, I'm not going to bother trying to read this, but um, the continuous current rating's 50 amps or something, so um, I thought it was actually 30 amps per leg, and it's got um, three three legs on it, or three poles. Um, so, you know, it's a three-phase contactor, basically, but it's being switched by 240, obviously. Um, it's, it's way overkill for this compressor, so my point is, even if the contacts were a little bit roached, it's not going to matter. You know, it's going to be fine. Um, I think what's happened with this is either some kind of electrical failure or a mechanical failure, but I personally believe it's probably a mechanical failure, I'm not really sure, because when you start this up, it, it's normal, you know, it runs just the way it should. Uh, if any refrigeration mechanics are watching this, um, if I even have any subscribed to my channel anymore, I think I do. Um, anyway, feel free to give you two cents, but... 30 years of almost continuous use before I got this unit. It's a hell of a lot of use. I'm actually very inclined to have a compressor put in this unit because it 
it looks very accessible, like it wouldn't be that difficult to actually put a compressor in. Um, it's got proper, you know, service valves on it, so it's it's not just a non-serviceable unit. It is an R22 unit, so I assume they'd have to recover the gas and replace it to something else. Um, but they'd be putting a compressor in it. I'm expecting it probably to cost a thousand bucks. I really have no idea. I've never had a compressor changed on anything. But this is a massive thing to have on the front of the house if it's not going to work. Um, I can fire it up. I know you guys will be a bit curious. So the unit was actually shut down at the switchboard. So yeah, it was dead. And yeah, so I'm going to press this contactor in using my finger, which is. You know, it's probably not the smartest thing in the world, but the contact is pretty safe. Like, you really can't touch the terminals on it very easily, so... But, you know, really you should be using caution. I prefer to use a multimeter probe to actually push these contactors in because... Or an insulated screwdriver. Please don't use just normal screwdrivers to push contactors in because... Yeah, you might slip and something bad might happen. At least if it's a rated and tested electrician screwdriver, you're less likely to have something bad happen. Because do remember, there's quite a lot of current available at these terminals. So let me start it up. It's, it runs pretty normally. Having said that, I do notice when I hit the contactor, there's a small delay in it actually starting up. So I think it's going to be new compressor time for this unit. Um, it's a good old unit. It's very well made. And... Uh, I really don't see a reason to scrap it. Um, the, the cabinet's in good nick. The compressor tray's a little rusty. Um, but the compressor tray's very solid. Like, you know, it really isn't significant corrosion. It should be, you know, painted up and whatnot. Um, I have 300 bucks sunk into it already in form of a new fan, which I fitted myself. If, if I'd gotten a... a um, Refrigeration mechanic, you'd be up for 200 bucks labor, 100 dollars to diagnose it, then another 100 bucks to come back and actually fit it. So, you know, there's essentially already about 500 dollars into this unit, excluding 200 bucks of that labor because I did it myself. Um, I, I, I'm not inclined to just leave it there and it just be a wart on the front of the house because it's units like this sort of end up being a feature because that they take up so much room they're so large that, you know, it's sort of a shame just to scrap them. Like, I even put a, uh, this, um, reversing valve coil is actually new. Um, and well, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's new. Um, but anyway, it's, um, yeah, there's really not much left that can go wrong. Um, if I do put a compressor in it, I'll definitely be painting the compressor tray and doing whatever else I think it needs, but really, even the run cap, the start run cap for the compressor is a brand new -y. like it's only been in there for not very long. Uh, but this unit's actually been, um, it's been running fine and then late at night it'll just not cycle back in. The compressor will just sit there stalled, um, then the overload takes it out. So, you know, the, the thermal overload in, in built in the unit that is. Um, but yeah, you'd expect, you'd expect it. Like, guess if you think about it, 30 years is a long time. You know, email don't even exist anymore. I don't think they intended for this unit to still be around. But I'll zoom out. There's a, there's a nameplate on the side of the unit, which may or may not be very handy. Um, the unit's dead, so I don't click the breaker off. This is the compressor. MDK, I don't remember what that stands for. I did look it up once. Um, yeah, so you can see it's pretty old. Um, wants to focus. Get a close-up of some of that details. If that means anything to anybody, I'd be really curious to find out. Here we go. Yeah, not taking a photo, I nearly went to turn it sideways. So this is just some information about the unit. So yeah, if anyone's got any uh, nuggets of information about these compressors, um, who MDK are and if they still exist, 
I'd be very interested to find out. Um, but at some point, you guys can expect a video about the compressor. Well, no, it's going to be a fridgy doing it. I can't videotape other people doing stuff. That would be a pain in the in the you know what to start with. Uh, but yeah, I think this video is long enough.